one retire on us and we grab one from retirement i don't know about this one man. the philadelphia eagles had stars on the field you know what i mean that that shows a lot especially to the young talent you know lets them know the culture you know what i mean lets them know that everybody on our team is happy you know there was a few absentees that did not show up you know but we're gonna get into that man but now But it is what it is, man. A few of those guys were um, James Bradbury, Devontae Smith, Lane Johnson, Kali Ringo, Jake Elliott, CJ Uzama, Josh Sweat. None of these guys was in attendance. But as you all know, um, this is voluntary. It all is all voluntary. You know, my couple of my takeaways, we're going to get right into it, man. But this one was the first one that was open to the media. The first organized team activity. OTAs. If you didn't know, now you know. You know what I mean? The Philadelphia Eagles look good in my opinion. Pause, man. We are definitely showing up right now. Like, I'm, I'm really seeing this team. I'm enjoying what I'm seeing from the young guys, the young Georgia Bulldogs. You know, I'm so happy that their focus is you know, let's go ahead and, and get in shape. Let's go ahead and condition ourselves. Y'all see that, you know, Fletcher Cox is not, he's not going to be there this time. He retired. So, you know, what do you do? We need you guys to be able to play more. A role has opened up. We need y'all to fill that role. And that's that's the honest to God truth, man. The success for the Philadelphia Eagles is all going to rely on this defensive line, in my opinion, because I feel like the corners, uh, I feel like we got some good corners. You know, we're going to get into, you know, who showed up in a little bit and who showed out today. But I feel like, you know, we have enough corners on the roster, you know, that I basically trust that we should be better than we was last year. You know, but I want to make sure, you know, with Fletcher Cox, you know, not being here, you know what I'm saying? With uh, um, you know, a lot of our guys who we had in that 2022 group, you know, they're not here no more. So we want to make sure that the guys who we have on a roster, like Milton Williams, you know, like uh, Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, you know, Josh Sweat, Huff, you know, we already know we're, we already know we got BG. He's one of our guys. You know, but at the same time, and we need these young guys to step up. We need these young guys to step up. You know, um, Jalen looks healthier, in my opinion. You know, it looked like he got a little bit of that speed back. You know, he got a gear back. You know, he also was laser sharp, on, you know, a 7-on-7. Seven seven. It's just OTAs. But we just talking about it. You know, Hurts look good in a 7-on-7. Seven seven. I'm hoping that, you know, we can continue seeing this progression. Um, it's been a lot of motion involved, just like we said. We already seeing the motion. The Hurts to AJ connection is still great and looking better. AJ looks faster, you know, and he's being used all over the field, man, which is amazing in my opinion. You see an AJ out there, um, and if you line him up all over the field, you motion AJ, man, that's that really a give the quarterback insight on what they trying to do. And that's why we need motion, man. That's why I'm happy to see that motion. You know, to me, it feels like the players, you know, are a little bit more humble this season, you know, especially when asked about Vic Fangio. You know, they understand, um, you know, how Vic Fangio is old school. Like, he'll make you run the hills, <laughs> you know. That's what George, That's what Jalen Carter said. He going to run the hills. You know what I'm saying? He going to be disciplined. That's what we need from our young players, man. Um, and we already know Jordan Davis is looking better. You know, Paul's he, he's getting in shape. Uh, Jalen Carter, we need we need him to do the same, stay in shape. Those guys are these guys got a motor on them. We need them. We need them to translate that on the field for a longer period of time. But you know, in my opinion, man, this team is going to be really good if we can put it all together. 
this team is going to be amazing. Um, you know, this is today was our first look, you know, at Saquon. You know, I'm excited that he's here. And to be honest with you, man, he is as good as advertised. Saquon is a dog. I know that the Giants fans don't want us to think that he's any good, but really, man, he was your best player on the roster. Y'all didn't want to pay him. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all wasted a bag on Daniel Jones. But I'm so happy that Saquon is here. I'm so happy that um he's starting to get that connection with Jalen. He said he's like a rookie again. Uh, you know, getting to know everybody in here, uh, learning the culture, binding to the culture. Um, and like you said, feel like it's home. We're so happy that you're here. I, I can't wait to see how this shake out, man. I really feel like that's going to be a dangerous duo in the backfield. You know what I mean? But from reports, man, I know everybody wanted to, you know, get some updates on Quinya. It was really important um, to get some up some intel on Quinya and to see how he's doing, you know, because, you know, that is our, our rookie. And, and we expect a lot from him. He's still a guy who hasn't signed his contract. Not saying that, you know, I'm worried that he won't. Cause I'm pretty sure that he will. Um, but I heard that he's doing really well in coverage, man. And you know, if you, if you want to think about it, these are the guys who we need to step up and they are already stepping up ASAP in OTAs, making plays, covering folks. These guys were the, was the show, man. And that's what I want to see, man. That's what we need. A, a media impact. We've been talking about that, you know, it's, since we drafted them. Since before that, we was like, hey, man, we need some people who can come out here and make an immediate impact. Tyler Steen is looking way confident. He's looking humble as well. You know, he feel like the guard position is his to earn instead of his to lose. So he's not coming here like, look, I'm out of, that's my position. Nah, he's like, I'm about to earn it. And looking at, you know, the guard and center position. And to me, you know, I, I feel like those guys, you know, could get better and better and better. And I like what I seen. You know, it was just a small sample size, but I like what I seen from these guys. They out here putting in work, building cohesion. That's what we need, man. I need that offensive line to be just as good as that offensive line was with Kelsey. I know it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. I know this, but I have full trust in Cam Jurgens. You know, I have I want I have full trust in Tyler Steen as well. You know, we've been sitting here talking about forever, you know, who's going to play that guard position. But now we got to see that Steen was playing with the with the first team. And he's very humble about it. He said that, you know, you know, in that game where he played well last season, he want to play want to let everybody know that he's better than that. And that's what we want to see, man. I'm telling y'all, man, this Philadelphia Eagles team it seemed like they got a new direction. You know, it seems like they, they're we are a lot younger right now. If you think about it, we went from being one of the oldest football teams to now being one of the youngest. And everybody's getting on track. Everybody's getting behind it. And everybody feel like, you know, we can be successful this season. And that's where it all stems from. That's where it all starts. It got to be a mental thing. And everybody got to have the same mindset. And that's being successful, having a good regular season, having better success, more success in the playoffs, and trying to get back to a Super Bowl and put some jewelry on your hands. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about. And I can't harp that enough. But, you know, moving on, man, I want to talk about this cornerback spot. You know, I want to talk about the starters a little bit, show them a little bit of love, because we, we wanted to know, you know, who was we going to see at the number one spot, who was we going to see at the nickel to start? And we already know that James Bradbury was not there. We know that already. I'm not saying that um, I, I know what happened to him because I don't. You know, is it, you know, getting around June 1st and it's time for you to go ahead and, 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 and kick it, kick rocks? We don't know. Maybe he'd be out there and we see him. You know, maybe he gets some tick. I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm a big James Bradbury fan. I'm ready to see these young guys. I'm ready to see Isaiah Rogers, see what he can do on the outside. A guy who has the biggest chip on his shoulder, playing with a chip on his shoulder. A guy who, you know, he's been ready to play, showing everybody that, 
you know, he's ready. We already know he can play. We've seen him play uh, for the Colts. We know this guy's a player. If this, if if Isaiah Rodgers turn out to be the cornerback that we all think that he gonna, he gonna be, that's gonna make Howie Roseman look like the genius that he is. That's why it's important. That's why it's important. So, like I said, man, we had Slay on the outside as as we should. Slay, one of those guys, and we are gonna talk about Slay. He said that you know he's he feel like he's twenty five again. You know he got the knee, he got his knee cleaned out. He said he's feeling healthy. He's winning all the races. Everybody want to race him. He said Isaiah Rogers want to race him. While we talking about it, he said he won the race. So he's just letting everybody know that that you know his wheels is back. The speed is still there. We already know he got the mental. We already know he can play this game. We already know that he's an all pro corner. You know what I mean? So we already knew we had a cornerstone right there who we respect, who we trust. But we also got Isaiah Rogers, who's, you know, who filled in and played that number one spot in OTAs today. That's amazing work. That's amazing work. And um, I heard that him and Paris Campbell, you know, was was having ourselves a, a battle. And that's what we want to see, man. That's we already knew we was how this was going to shake out. We already knew that the competition was steep, and everybody want to earn a spot on his roster. And the people that can't get on his roster, they 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 getting out of here. They getting out of here, and we cool with that. But also, man, another surprise: Avante Maddox starting at the nickel position. Now that is that's crazy, bro. Because I have always been. Uh, Avante Maddox guy, you know, especially when, you know, he's healthy. When he's when he's on the field, he's one of the best at the nickel position, you know. But he do have an issue with staying um, injured, and that's cool. But you know, he's out there. We know we we got in Maddox. We just need him to um, stay healthy, and I'm glad that he got that start at the nickel position. I'm glad he did because it's time to show him proof. I, I, it was looking. That's another move that would make Howie a genius. You know how you know we let Maddox walk to get to kind of come off that contract, a lot, a lot of that money, right? And then we bring him back on a cheaper deal, and he have a he have a great season. It just makes Howie Roseman look like the genius that he is. You know what I mean? So also, man, Maddox is playing, you know, safety with the third team. That's why it's good to have Avante Maddox here because he can play almost two positions and he can play outside if we need it. Even though I don't trust him out there, I, you know I like him in the inside. I like not, you know if we gotta have him at safety, okay. But I like where Maddox is. I like that he's starting in the, in the nickel. I like that, and I like that he's third team safety. It's real good for the Philadelphia Eagles, man. It's nothing but a win. So. Let's talk about, um, you know, what we've seen, what we've heard. You know, Chris Franklin, you know, a part the guy, part of the Eagles media. He's been there. He's been reporting. You know, if you, if you haven't checked out his, his Instagram, I mean, his uh, Twitter on X, make sure you do that. I leave it in the description. You know, I really trust his, you know, what he say. Um, and he said it's a lot of motion involved. And that's important. That's important to know. Because we... We need that motion. That's something that we did not do last season. And we already seeing it in OTAs. It gives the QB some insight, you know, on what their defense is trying to do. That's basically what that motion is, man. And <laughs> and look, man, let me tell you something. It's going to be good because we have the, the talent on offense. We have a really good receiving core. We have a really good running back. We have a really good quarterback. We have the offensive line. We have the tight end. We have that. You know what I'm saying? So it's only going to be a nightmare to stop this offense. But look, man, let's talk about the receivers. We got into, uh, you know, A.J. Brown earlier, you know, but I want to talk about Paris Campbell. Um, he had himself a day, man. He lined up against Rodgers. You know, he was out there making contested catches. So that's good, man, because with the retirement of uh, Devontae Parker, we need somebody to step up 
I always thought that Paris Campbell was better than Devontae Parker at this present moment. You know what I mean? So I'm cool with everything I'm seeing. Paris Campbell, if you can earn that that third spot, I would be a, I would be good with that. But you, I'm telling you right now, you're gonna have a Dean Smith, um, chomping at the bit to get in and make some plays. But the competition is steep. Smitty and AJ, the one of the best duos in the league. So I trust them guys. I know they they ready to play. Man, AJ is out here balling, fast. Showing these young cats, man. Look, this is why they. I'm, I'm him. This is why I'm, I'm him, and that's exactly what AJ is. And he a leader. He wants to be a leader. He after all y'all said that AJ was a was a problem maker. He was an issue for the team. Look, AJ is a leader, bro. Let that man get out there and earn his his money and become. I know he want to be a Hall of Famer one day. You know what I'm saying? He got the skills to do it. But let's talk about the linebackers, man. We did see Nicobe Dean out there. I think he was stretching. Uh, but at the same time, I, I I didn't get I didn't hear a lot about Nicobe Dean today. But I did hear about Devin White. You know, he was the signal caller. He was the leader out there. And Zach Bond, you know, he was kind of that will linebacker. So both of these guys are getting some tick there. I'm not about to sit here, you know, as everybody know, I've been saying this, that linebacker is kind of, you know, the position of concern for me. Number one, John Ross. He just signed a one-year deal on Thursday. You know, the ninth pick in 2017. You know, he was drafted by the Bengals. He did retire in 2023 after 37 games. He had 62 catches, 957 yards, and 11 touchdowns. You know, so he is a guy who has played in this league. It was a lot of injuries. Maybe that's the reason why he retired. I'm not sure. But, you know, he did play four, uh, four seasons in Cincy, and I feel like that was probably his uh, bread and butter time. You know, he did play with the Giants. Now we do, we have another New York Giant on our team. We're going to see how this go. It's a lot more football to go, you know, before the final 53 is set. So, look, man, we'll see if he got what it takes to make the team. For now, I'm out.